Hi guys, I need a little bit of help because uh, I just bought something and during testing and some modification I already fried it. And it is this uh, LED strip light that you can see here which is in this nice uh, woven sort of like enclosure. It's a very nice uh, like you know 360 LED strip which gives a very you know even light and it just you know looks so nice as it shines through this uh, semi-transparent plastic wavy pattern or like a rope so it's just basically a, like a glowing rope and uh, so as you can see it comes with a controller and I started making some modifications to it and as I was testing this modification uh, there was a pop sound maybe there was a little bit of smoke and now it's not working well technically I killed the light because the controller is still working so let me just rewind back to the beginning. So this controller came with the uh, with the light. Well, I paid for the option which comes with the controller. So this is like a simple Bluetooth controller. As you can see, the controller supports anything from 5 to 24 volts. But this strip is probably like a VS WS1228B 12, addressable LED. So it runs on 5 volts. Uh, so the power rig which came with it was also 5 volts. And I thought that I'm going to add USB-C power supply to this because I want to, you know, if I want to take it mobile, I can run it from a power bank. And uh, I thought I have these trigger boards and I might just use it because I have quite a few of these. I haven't really used them for anything. And as you can see, they, have, they are configurable to select 9, 12, 15 or 20 volts. And by default, there was a solder bridge at 12 volts, which I desoldered. And then I, you know, I soldered some wires and they are hooked into the DC input. And when this was done, I dry fitted everything. So the controller was still disassembled. You know, the, the wires were hanging everywhere. And uh, I plugged it in the USB and I tested it and the light worked and it was fine. So I glued this uh, onto the enclosure and I applied the uh, conformal coating just to protect it. And I waited for a couple of hours and I wasn't, wanted to test this out again. And that, that's when I heard a pop and then it stopped working. And actually the controller is still working because it supports 24 volts. So, you know, I can still see the controller on the phone. I can connect to it and I can change the lights. Of course, I don't see anything because the, the light is actually broken. And when I measure the voltage, because it has these, it has two of these three pin outputs. I'm not sure why they have two. Maybe they support, you know, two different strips. But usually these addressable strips have power on the, on the side and data in the middle. So if I probe this one, you can see it's measuring 20 volts. So something happened with this trigger board and even though I don't have a solder bridge from the 20 volts, it is just giving out 20 volts. And I have no idea why. So I was thinking that maybe the combination of the super glue and the conformal coating did something to it and then broke it. But I don't understand how. So I, I, I was also thinking that maybe I applied a very thick layer of conformal coating and maybe the uh, the bottom layer which uh, touches the PCB did not solidify so that is creating some conductivity but I'm not really sure so you know it's just giving out 20 volts which obviously fried the LED strip and I do like this I, I, th I still want to play around with this uh, light so I was you know considering buying another one of these uh, you know rope things and of course just keep the controller because the controller is still working but um, you know, if this USB-C is behaving like that, I can't really rely on it to be, you know, to be reliable. I mean, the other thing I can do is instead of using the USB-C, I can just take a crap USB cable, you know, just a simple USB-A and then cut it and then I plug it into a USB-A socket. I mean, usually my power banks have USB-A and they can only do 5 volts. So there is no other way of me breaking that. But um, yeah, I just have these trigger boards and I might just use it for other projects, but I don't really understand how this could have gone wrong in, uh, in such a way. Because especially if I want to reuse this for other projects, I want to make sure that they are reliable and they are not 
you know, all of a sudden just switching to different voltages that I don't need. I'm probably going to fry my electronics. So, yeah, so if you have any ideas, let me know in the comment section if you have uh, issues like that or if you work with these trigger boards or, you know, what could be the reason why it just uh, suddenly started changing voltages. Because, um, uh, yeah, I'm out of ideas. Okay, that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.